I do it. Do it. Play it. Make it live. Logan messed this whole thing up already. Oh, there it is. And we're live. It actually worked, Logan. You were able to make the intro work. I'm so proud of you. I feel like a doting father. Don't you, Tom Heineber? That intro sucks. Oh, it's the best intro. Nobody, this is 2019. Just give me patience. Ain't nobody got time for that intro, oh, see? Oh, it's Ain't true. nobody got time. No attention span. You're scrolling through. Facebook is auto playing. Mm. All right, let's talk about. Let's cut right to this. Let's, let's talk about right. how you gonna... pissed off everybody on the internet. Every single person on the internet. Yet again. Is mad at me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like. I did it. I did it. No, actually, listen, we did a piece on abortion. Why? Because we're, we're we like to flagellate ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we've been talking about this for a long time. Everyone's been asking me, can you weigh in on the Alabama abortion law, Ohio, Missouri, all these places that are putting dr rather draconian restrictions well, on Well, let's say that when we were first talking about it behind the scenes, me and you had essentially the same opinion mm -hmm. on abortion, mm -hmm. which was kind of like a nuanced middle ground ish. Ex yeah, except I'm I'm a little less nuanced. I'm just like it's always a woman's right. It's a healthcare procedure. I sometimes don't feel great about it because of experiences I had when I was a medical student. But any anybody trying to legislate it is making a mistake. Anybody yeah. trying to apply you know religious doctrine to it is making a mistake. So, the, but 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 which I feel this I feel the same way. We agree. Yeah. So we decided we were going to do a piece that first of all made it very clear where my stance is, which is this is a woman's right. Uh, women's reproductive rights are paramount. Abortion is a healthcare procedure, all right? And, and it, the legislation of it, especially by you know, white men in the South, is a terrible idea. It is gonna lead us back to sepsis wards for people who are post-home uh, abortions and back alley abortions. It's going to lead us down a path of in in intense human suffering. And it is, it's a very backwards way to see things because it's pretty clear that uh, legal safe abortion is the best answer for the most people to keep them safe. Now, because this was the gist of the video that you know we put out, you could assume, and you probably one would assume, that it's the far right who's upset about this video. But in fact, it's not. It's the far left. I was bracing for death threats uh, from anti-abortion activists or the forced birthers, as they're known. Uh, and I got some of that, definitely, definitely. But what surprised me, and I got a lot of feedback on the video from people who are, are a lot of physicians, too, saying thank you for giving voice to how I actually feel about this. I feel that this is absolutely to be protected in a woman's a woman's right and that the doctors who doing who are doing this are are providing health care to people in need, period. But I'm also I also am still vaguely uncomfortable because of an experience I had or something I've seen or some uh, moral standpoint that I have. Now that's the most feedback that I got. That's the majority of the feedback. Then one day morning I go and look on Twitter, just casually looking through my feed, and oh my Someone poked the outrage nest with a fork and everybody was attacking me directly as a horrible human being, a, 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 a perpetuator of the patriarchy, a white male with privilege, which I'm one of those things, maybe, maybe only one of those things. <laughs> and, uh, um, and all this stuff really attacking me as a human being and p calling into question everything we've ever done for Health 3.0, for violence against healthcare providers, for moral injury, for all the other things. None of it matters because the outrage uh, quotient on social media and the call out culture and the fact that people are getting social media cred for attacking me. Now, the exception is the obstetricians who were calling me out, and this is what was triggering everybody's anger. And, and honestly, I'm gonna say it was absolutely appropriate in terms of tr triggering anger because of, of the way I did this. So in the first part of the video, I said, okay, listen, this is my take on those laws. It's bad, it's a woman's right. Here's why we need abortion as a legal, safe means of healthcare. You ask me, z Dog, what do you think about abortion? Here's a story. When I was in medical school, I, had, I, I went and witnessed them, uh, and I used language which apparently was not, is a dog whistle for saying poor minorities, which as I said, inner city urban. So that was crime number one. And the truth is, 
it was an inner city urban hospital where I saw this. So that's why I said that. The patients that I was talking about were not necessarily minorities and there was more than one, but that's a dog whistle, right? To the, to, to people who are, um, you know, uh, very into these issues on either side that I'm saying minorities and poor people, right? I did say poor because they were, and they're coming to a county hospital. So that was one thing. Then I said, I, I witnessed second trimester abortions. And what I saw, this is how I perceived it, that, you know, this was happening and that, 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 that uh, you know, the baby was moving away from the device and, you know, baby parts were coming out. That's what I said. That was the, that's what it felt like when I was sitting in that room. Did I get counseling? Did I get education? Did I get any of that at the time? No. Now, what I didn't say, because we do these as expository rants, and we take that take if we feel good about it. And at the time I did it, I was like, that's how I felt. And we put it out. What I didn't say was <laughs> the perception that I had sitting in that room was not necessarily an accurate medical perception. And that, you know, first of all, this is a fetus. It's not born yet. When it's born, it's a baby. And this is, this is technical nomenclature, but the problem is it actually matters, and I'll tell you why in a second. The baby does not recoil from the stuff. These, they don't have the wiring circuitry yet to do that. Now, that has no um, uh, statement on is it conscious, is it, is it alive, none of that. That's not what you're speculating on. You're, is it, you know, avoiding the probe? And then I made a statement too, which was my perception, which is, there was, you know, the, the people who were these passionate advocates for women were doing this with a, with a kind of a clinical, pa you know, it's a passion, it's a fervor, because they're good at it. And they, and they deeply uh, 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 know that they're doing this for women's health and they're doing a procedure. It's like a, a surgeon who does a Whipple feels absolutely secure about it. But the way I perceive that as an impressionable third year uh, medical student who was not only pro-choice, I was almost pro-infanticide at that point in my life because I felt that this, this entity doesn't come online as a consciousness until it can talk and think and all this. That's how I felt at that time. And to, I saw this and I recoiled inwardly. I was like, ah, because visually, emotionally, intuitively, it all felt wrong. Now, did I explain this in the video? No, and that was the mistake because it turns out the same language I used to describe the story, which I should have followed up with, but this is not true, but yet I, now I, you can understand why even an educated person will come away going, this feels wrong. And so instead of doing that, instead of explaining myself, I didn't. And I ended with saying, but this needs to be legal, it needs to be safe. And, it, and so of course the right criticized me, well, if you think it's like this horrible thing, how can you say that? And the left criticized me and saying, everything you said in describing that experience is what the hardcore anti-abortion people say when they attack our clinics, when they threaten our lives, when they write us death threats. And what you just did by saying that is put me, a person who cares for women and, and is delivering health care to often, often poor and disadvantaged people, you are putting my life at risk by giving them ammunition because they're going to look at you, a doctor who has a big platform, and you've basically parroted their own shit. And that was what I realized. I said, okay, now I have to do a video talking about this because that's wrong. And that wasn't my intent in the video. Now, the, we can talk about this more, but so first thing I have to say is, no, that's not my intent. And I should have followed up with what I just said. And even that's not gonna be enough for some people, but I don't care because it's enough for me. I feel like, okay, I've said this. If you're an anti-abortion person who's thinking of hurting uh, a, an abortion provider, you should be put in jail for life and kept away from people and you're sick and there's no excuse for it. If you're someone who would put restrictions on a woman's right to choose, I'm gonna also say, no, I don't agree with you, and, and I will advocate tirelessly for this, and my alma mater, UCSF, just disengaged from a contract they had with Dignity Health because Dignity Health as a Catholic organization won't support these reproductive uh, interventions, and I actually support UCSF on this, I do, and I've worked with both entities. So that's where I stand, Tom Heineber, uh, it's not gonna be enough for the outrage police on Twitter, but I don't care about them. I care about my colleagues who had very good points about what I said. And I also care about that video doing the right thing in the world, which I think it actually still does. And they'll disagree with me vehemently. I don't, uh, fa, 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 fuck these people, <laughs> fuck them. I'm not gonna say their names because he asked me not to, but you could probably just go to Zubin's Twitter mentions and figure out who they are for your, for yourself. You know, they're not, first of all, if somebody's 
this is just basic internet etiquette in the year 2019. If somebody is publicly quote tweeting you and then, you know, saying, oh, this guy is fucking piece of shit, blah, blah, blah. Instead of privately messaging you and saying, hey, I, I have some quibbles with what you said. All they're trying to do is run up the score yeah. for their in group, for their audience that you're not a part of. And so, so it's it's an act in bad faith. Okay, so right the, off the bat. Yeah, and, and and this is where I agree with you with some exceptions. So okay, if if I so this video had been out for three, four days, I think, before yeah. I started getting seeing the shit storm on Twitter. People had been sending me plenty of messages on Facebook and they were all along the lines of, Thank you for making that video. It triggered me in this way or it triggered me in that way, or I had an abortion and I still feel bad about it because I, I, I stopped an unfolding that I never will know the result of, but even retrospectively, I know I made the right decision, right? And so these very heartfelt emotional stories, and people who say this is a black and white issue, I'm gonna take disagreement with that. And I was lectured at by several people, this is black and white, there's no nuance here. It's just like your stance on abortion, on a vaccine, Z-Dog, there's no nuance, you can either be with us or against us. That is the kind of everyone is evil or everyone is bad, fallacy type thinking that I think is why we now see laws in Alabama and we see laws in Ohio, because the people who are the fiercest advocates take such a intolerant stance to even listening yeah. that I think it's shutting it down. So I feel that way, but that's fine. I understand and I understand the harm potentially that can come from framing this wrong. Here's where I get really pissed. So most of the people on Twitter are doing this exactly for the reason you say. They're out, they're, they run up the outrage scoreboard, they get social points, and John Haidt and others have written about this, by showing, calling you out, yeah. showing their moral value, and they don't really care about the actual issue, because if they cared, this is what they would do. They would have seen already, they know who I am, a lot of them are fans of mine. They would, they would see that, hey, Z-Dog is not a bad human being. He probably wants to do the right thing. I think he did the wrong thing. I'm gonna message him. It's so easy to reach me, Zubin at turntablehealth.com, zdogmd at gmail.com, the booking form and the contact form on my website, Facebook messages, Twitter direct messages, yeah. if you follow me. It's easy. All you have to do is say, I'm a colleague of yours, and I'm really, really, really upset about what you did, and here's why. And I would have listened. These people are extremists. I mean, all right, here's the thing. Calling it a fetus until the moment it hits the air, like the air is some sort of ollie ollie oxen free for it becoming a baby, is nonsense. It's a fucking baby at some point, usually after the window of viability. Like, can we at least agree on that? Well, I don't care about the nomenclature. Like, yeah. it's a fucking human uh, life form. In uh, there. Uh, I mean, you, in the third trimester, if you kill a baby at 33 weeks, right? Or you deliver a baby at 33 weeks, it's a baby. It's not a fetus. A fetus is pre-viability in my mind. I don't care what the medical so science let, says. Let, let, yeah. Because I, it seems let, to be very specific. Let, okay, so here's my take. Oh, ta listen, oh, this guy, who's this white male trying to tell me about abortions? That's exactly right. At some right. point, you're killing a baby. What, right. What's so hard about this okay, to understand? This is what I'm going to say about what you just said. It is what many Americans feel. Mm -hmm. So how can you ignore what you're saying and still hope to persuade and influence that a woman's reproductive choice is hers. How can I influence, let's say you're a hardcore anti-abortion person and that's how you feel. You're not, but let's say that's how you felt. How can I influence you by attacking you direct on and saying, no, it's a bundle of cells, shut the fuck up. Your, your thoughts and feelings on this matter not a bit. Yeah. You, you can't. And, and, and It's I, a bundle of cells at the beginning and at some point it's a baby. What point is it a baby? You, you wanna know what I think? Yeah. And again, it doesn't matter what I think. I don't care. Like, oh, it's a fetus. And I know people will attack me for this. Well, he here's what I think. It's a fetus till it hits the air? That's stupid. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Here, here's, here's my take. And again, you can disagree with me. This doesn't matter. But my take is everything is conscious. Yeah. It's all consciousness. And it's just... It's hierarchically more complex and more hi higher levels of awareness and consciousness and complexity. So there is a hierarchy in complexity. So right. eating a plant is different than eating a cow is different than eating a chimp. Of course. It, it, killing a human is different than killing an ant. And in terms of that, destroying complexity and the in, uh, unfolding of consciousness. Now, as an embryo, this is my personal belief. I'm not imposing this on anyone. As an embryo grows and unfolds, it gets progressively more complex. Even as an infant, it doesn't approach the a complexity of its mother. If I'm making a decision and I'm saying hierarchically who is gonna have 
a, a, a choice over um, rights. I'm always gonna side with the mother. And that's because of the complexity of her unfolding in that moment. That's my personal belief system. And, and again, you can disagree with me. And I think good people with good intention can disagree on this. Now the-, the Wait, Here's the thing too, uh, all right, here's the thing. We, ne at no point in the original video, did we say that there should be legislation? Never. Never once. We didn't, we didn't say well, that. So this is the other thing, the mission. So that's the thing, I'm allowed to feel however the fuck I want to feel about it as long as I'm not really advocating for taking away personal liberties, which we're not. So I can feel icky about it because it's gross. <laughs> it's what, like... <laughs> what, yeah, what I don't understand in the response to the video, and it's maybe because I just don't have a, I have a failure of perception on this, or I'm biased, is that most of the video, the majority, the vast majority, is me talking about how we ought to defend a woman's right to make these choices against the encroachment of non-clinicians right. making these decisions. Now. It doesn't matter what I believe yeah. or how I'm conditioned. That's how, that's how I'm gonna act in the world because it is creating a better world in terms of suffering in my calculation. It's like, here's the thing, as straight as both straight males, you don't have to cop to this, but I'll say it for you, <laughs> is we both have a disgust response to gay porn. If you somebody showed you gay porn, you're probably gonna have a disgust response because it's just not something you're interested in. Now, do I wanna tell people that they can't go have gay sex? No. Fuck your boyfriend. Like Logan does it all the time. I'm kidding. But <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to limit people's r rights. You know, I don't want to tamp that down. Like, but I just also feel gross about it. I, I want to, because it's gross to me. I want to dive into that because that's actually a great analogy for my third year medical school experience with, with this second trimester abortion. Now, I, uh, I didn't get into the details of this, but this was this patient's seventh elective second trimester abortion. The people I were talking to, the residents and others, were talking about how this was uncomfortable even for them, just to see it. You know that 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 you know there isn't contraception, there isn't this and that. And it was, what number was it again? It was like six or seven. Ooh. So it was it was tough. Now the 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 people who provide these abortions will say it doesn't matter. Yeah. And I was told this, it doesn't matter. This is a medical procedure and you do a medical procedure. This is not a judgment, this is not a moral equation, this is a medical procedure. I do understand that, but here's the thing. Can I tell you this is a non-clinician. My moral palate is just like a bystander is like get that person a fucking hysterectomy after like number 3. Do you know what my do you know what my moral palate is? put the guy who did this to her in jail and force him to have a vasectomy. You know, that was something we didn't talk about. That was a fuck up on our part in the original videos that we didn't talk about men's responsibility because I think we both feel that men are shirking their responsibility left and right. And it's like, hey, it's pretty basic, idiots. Yeah. If you don't want to have to raise this child, then don't come inside the girl. What's so hard to fucking figure out? Wear a fucking condom, pull out, fucking don't be, you know what I mean? Th think about if you're what, not prepared to help this woman raise this child you have no business doing th th that th think about what men are doing to women when they do this they are inflicting on them a choice that we're all trying to protect right this choice to do i carry this baby to term give it up for adoption do i carry this baby to term keep it as my own do i have an abortion somewhere along the route yeah, it's baby roulette how the fuck as a man can you inflict that suffering without taking responsibility without saying you know it, we are not holding our men responsible period right so yes force castration is what i'm <laughs> saying you know for the for the for the guy or guys that are doing this and but again that's not realistic it's again it's in a violation of of their choice whatever but this is an emotional piece and that stuff is now back to this piece about you uh, you were talking about um, the disgust response. Yeah, watching gay porn. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, so this is interesting. Now <laughs> people are going to be like, makes it sound like I watch gay porn. Again, you're going to you're going to trigger the outrage factor on Twitter, but we don't give a fuck about that because that's not what we're responding to. What we're responding to is the legitimate criticism. All right, the outrage people can shut the fuck up if you're going out mm. there trying to. Private message me, tell me your outrage, and we'll have a conversation. And I had a couple of really good conversations with obstetricians who were publicly in their in their tweets at me were actually rather professional and said, "Z dog, I respect the, your body of work. This bothers me for these reasons." I DM that person. Please understand my intent on this. They respond back. Totally understood. Here's the problem. Awesome. Let's keep talking about this. Wonderful dialogue. The rest of them are, he's a patriarchal white. You are trying yeah. to take away our rights. No, never said that. Wrong, 
You're misrepresenting what I'm saying. Why? Because you get brownie points. Now, the big bad Z-Dog, who's evil, now has to, you know, has to fall a few pegs from whatever low place he already was be so that you can rise. That's how the game is played now. But so, the gay porn thing. I had a, uh, a gay roommate in, at Berkeley, and uh, he one day in, in the lounge brought a tape of gay porn. And all of us were really curious because we'd never seen it. <laughs> And so we all sit down in the lounge, uh -huh. public lounge, and we watch this tape. And initially it was interesting. Everybody was like, oh, you know, because it is. It's a heterosexual uh, normal response, I think, for many to go, ooh, I've never seen that before. And it doesn't, it, you know, it, it's, it's not something that is uh, intuitive for me. But as I sat and watched it with him, and he's explaining, he's like, see, we sometimes we'll do that. That this is the equivalent of the ma of the female male missionary position. This is this, and I remember just going, I just got schooled, and in a weird way, I actually kind of understand now. And I'm start I started to question. I was like, could I have a little? Uh, could I be a little bit? Mm? And then I was like, no, no. Look, you want to you want to see the disgust response in action? I have a great story about this. My buddy, my roommate, who I used to live with. There, there was the, back in the day. The only uh, movie with real porn in it on Netflix was a movie called Nine Songs by the director <laughs> Michael Winterbottom, and in it they have real sex. The actors have real sex, and it's like vaguely artsy, but like you just skip to the sex scenes. And uh, the girl has short hair, and my bud like, and she's pretty skinny, you know. And the girl or uh, my buddy walks in from the garage while we're watching this and thinks it's two dudes <laughs> and he immediately starts vomiting really <laughs> not a joke and i was like trevor that's uh, sorry i said his name but i was like that's <laughs> i was like that's straight porn dude that's a girl she just has short hair he was like oh, i thought it was gay wow <laughs> <laughs> wow. He had a disgust response to wow. straight porn. Wow. Yeah. Well, so so I think this is to say the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> the point I'm trying Bit to make with this is that we are to some degree conditioned, hardwired, moral matrixed, whatever it is, to have certain responses. And when I saw the procedure as a medical student, I had this kind of response. And I actually was able to process it later, not perfectly, but it would have, but just like watching the gay porn where I was processing with somebody there and he was talking me through it and I was like, oh, that's what I, and it's with a group of people. So it felt, you know, like this kind of interesting lecture almost. It, from then on, I was reasonably woke about this stuff. Yeah. And, and, and it, 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 it improved my understanding. I think some of the criticism leveled at me was very valid in that that's what should have happened from your experience as a third year watching this procedure. You should have asked questions, you should have been counseled, you should have been taught to, to stop repeating this, you know, incorrect stuff, which I, you know, figured out later. But the thing is, that could have been a learning experience that then you could have passed on to others instead of perpetuating these talking points, right? And and I understand that. Like mm -hmm. that that does make sense. Um still at some point you're killing a baby. At and, some point you're killing a baby. That's just how it is. That's just, that's reality. Like, I didn't make up propaganda. I'm not on the far right side. I think abortion should be legal and available and rare. That it should rarely happen. Not seven abortions for well, one person. You know, again, my stance is, uh, is that uh, it's a hierarchical decision on nested consciousness and you always will go with the higher hierarchy. Now, again, within limits within limits not not i'm not saying you limit abortion i'm saying there are limits to this thinking like in other words a child is isn't less it, complex isn't it than an adult that historically it was uh, the opposite that you know like a cesarean section was uh for the baby not for the mother right like back in the day i actually don't know the history on this yeah well yeah the cesarean yeah. section was to save the baby right but the mother wouldn't survive is that it oftentimes I, not i don't i mean the, I don't imagine know doing a cesarean I mean, section in roman times maternal mortality is terrible even now yeah in america well it's also it's interesting too because we now live in an era where every child has to be wanted and historically that was not the case you mm -hmm. could easily be raised by caregivers who didn't want you or like you oliver twisty yeah uh, well but okay actually this is a piece of it too. We talk a lot, you and I, about the cultural inheritance of uh, our ancestors that is passed on. It's a kind right. of an unfolding. Yeah. So slavery, we talk about as having epigenetics. Whether it's epigenetics or something even well, more. Well, yeah, it's not yeah. technically epigenetics. That's a good, no, it, it's, I think it's a piece of it, but I think there's, you know, there, there's all kinds of ways to inherit stuff. Uh, imagine the cultural inheritance of women. We can't because we're men, but just let's just try to put ourselves, for millennia, it's like you said, it was about the baby, not the mother. 
It was about uh, uh, the father, you know, the father trying to pass on this thing and this is sort of primogenitor and all this stuff. And the mother is inconsequential. Her rights don't matter. Her her body is not hers. She's forced to carry this thing to term. Now imagine uh, you're in a position now where you get finally these rights to control your own reproduction, and now they're threatened. And then some clown named Z Dog MD does a video that you're going to gloss over all the stuff that supports your rights and focus on the one part where he was triggered as a medical student. Of course you would do that, right? So I actually understand this. Now, the question is, do you take down the video? No. And no. I'm with you on that. Never. No. I can do a clarifying video like this. I can write in the text of the video, here's, a, here's something that you need to know, but I'm not gonna take it down because I, the video actually had the effect on the people I was trying to affect. Yeah. And, and that's and that's the thing. And it is authentically what I was saying. That's that's what we do. We don't script it. We don't really do more than kind of mentally structure it. And so, and, and here's another reason I won't take it down. I will never bow to outrage culture. If 30 obstetricians had emailed me privately before, you know, uh, uh, people started this public Twitter thing, I would have listened to them, I might have had phone calls with them, and I've offered to do this with certain very prominent people on Twitter, and, and they, won't, they won't have phone calls, they won't come on the show, because they don't wanna give a false equivalence to another side that doesn't exist in their mind to this argument. Because they're extremists. Whatever it is, they yeah. won't come. So that's fine, and I respect that, but the thing is, um, I won't bow to outrage culture. And the truth is, I don't care if I lose every follower on Twitter, it does not, I do not give a fuck if I am still getting the messages that I'm getting on the video, which are positive messages. And these are not positive messages from anti-abortion extremists. They're positive messages from people who are like, I am also pro-choice, or I understand now why you support a woman's right. You can still feel conflicted inside about it because it is an emotional issue. And if you deny that it's an emotional issue, now here's the thing, I get accused of saying, well, this is not true. Why do you treat vaccines as a black or white issue? And this is why. First of all, vaccines are a tiny fringe of, of people that are really hardcore delusional anti-vaxxers, and then 10 or so percent of people who are kind of just concerned because of the poisoning of this delusional component. In, in a vaccine issue, by first of all, the science is pretty clear and settled, as the uh, pro-choice advocates will say is with abortion as well, uh, correctly. But the difference is when they go out in the world with this discomfort and they refuse to vaccinate their children, they are about to murder an elder or someone too young to be vaccinated or someone who's got an immune illness that can't be, they can't be vaccinated. They are affecting lots of other people by creating epidemics and this is now a public health issue. So the black and white thinking I get more uh, uh, intense about it. However, when I'm trying to influence mothers on the fence, do I give this kind of extremist rant about there's no black or white, this or this or this? No, I've done videos for this. I say, listen, I was terrified. I was fucking terrified to give six shots to my kid at once or whatever. Feels totally wrong. I actually started Googling, but when a doctor Googles, they do it very differently. They know that you're not gonna listen to a Sherry Tenpenny and you're not gonna listen to Jenny McCarthy. You're gonna look at actual doctors who do this research and you're gonna go, okay, yeah, I trust these guys. And that's how I make my decisions. But you, you respect the fact that they're morally conflicted by this because it feels wrong. And I think by not doing that, we're relegating, we're relegating these decisions to legislators who play on emotions. If we can't use emotion to make our arguments, others will do it and they'll do it without the science well and it's also like i mean <laughs> imagine giving power to a legislator who's going to make the laws in this country uh and this person believes that if he doesn't write this law into effect even people as high as you know the supreme court judge kavanaugh that if he doesn't write this law into effect that a, a person in the sky will be mad at him <laughs> I'm sorry. It's laughable. It's laughable. But it's many so people stupid. believe this. Yeah. And I, look at look at that's the other thing I said in the video. I said if you have a religious belief that precludes uh, contraception, sex ed, and abortion, you need a new religious belief. Right. Yeah. And and I'm not. Picking and people up, were like, oh well, you, not all religious people believe that, man. And it's like uh, that's not what I said. Yeah. Well. All, yeah. <laughs> First of all, listen. Like the video is very specific. Right. Right. 
Second of all, yeah, the Catholics do believe that. Like, I grew up Catholic. I don't care if they've softened their stance. That's what they still basically believe, because mm. it's good for business. You make more Catholics that way. <laughs> Th- that's why it's set up that way. <laughs> oh. the re- you're not allowed to have an abortion, and you're not allowed to kill yourself, because that is a net <laughs> loss for Catholicism. You know what I'm so saying? It's just a straight numbers game. Is it's what a saying. straight numbers game. Damn, homie. Mm-hmm. So well, they should be for in vitro fertilization, but they're not. Sometimes it'd be like that, dog. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I keep Tom Heineber around, you know? It's like when push comes to sub, sometimes it just be like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it, it <laughs> so I, I don't know, Tom. I mean, can I be honest? Like, yeah. it, it's it hurts me personally when my colleagues uh, attack me. It does. Yeah. I take it seriously. And... Well, this is why you don't care about any of the criticisms that you got from the far right is because the far right is not your in-group. Yeah, you know? that's right. Clinicians. That's right. And clinicians who happen to be leftist are your in-group, you know, because that's where you come from. You come from, you know, yeah, the I mean, most I liberal trained, place I trained, in the world. I trained at UCSF. This is my tribe. So there is a kind of a deep um, aversion to being excommunicated from your in-group. It's yeah. an evolutionary thing. So when I see these comments, uh, you know, the ones that, only the only ones that bother me are the ones that are from colleagues that are like, you're a bad scientist, Dr. Venkman, and we're going to pull you, you know, nice mm-hmm. Ghostbuster reference. Those ones do hurt me because I do want to do the right thing. Now, what what doesn't hurt me is idiots who are like, he's just an evil person. It's like, well, you're just an idiot. You're, you're playing the social media game. You're dumb. So my point is, if we make a video and you feel strongly as a colleague, someone who really knows about this stuff, or even if you don't, email me, message me, send me. I read them all and I will listen to you. I take it seriously. You know, if a, if a world-class, uh, you know, th- so there was somebody at a world-class academic institution, obstetrician who uh, tweeted at me and I had a conversation with her and it was a wonderful conversation and I learned something and she learned what my intention and my, my modus was. Because this is the other thing, Tom, people don't, people in this conversation around, say, abortion. Do not have conversations that are nuanced because it doesn't win you points. All it's won me is fucking pain. Like, yeah. oh, I don't sleep at night because I'm worried, did I say something that's now gonna get a, an abortion provider killed inadvertently because extremists are crazy on both sides of this? I, I you know, I also wanna go into this idea of uh, you, can, you can feel one way and act another way. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I yeah. do it all the time. Yeah. I, like, my core elephant is probably don't kill any babies. Mm. Like, is like, I could be as hard right as I wanted to, because that's sort of the moral matrix and the cultural conditioning that I come from. But it's not, it doesn't align with the facts. And so I would never make that, take that stance. Like, mm. I... I would advocate for right to choose as well. Even even if a woman wanted to have a third trimester abortion at the last possible minute and some asshole doctor in the country was willing to make that happen for her, <laughs> I would be okay with it because she'd probably be a shit mother, you know? <sighs> but and both people involved in that transaction are assholes. It, well, you know... The doctor and the listen, woman. Listen, I think the one thing that I'm going to say is I think people who think this is a black and white issue, I'm, that's where I'll disagree. If you're so extreme as a doctor that you would electively kill a 34-week-old baby, you can fuck yourself. There, there are there are <laughs> medical reasons to do it. There are medical reasons to Medi- do it. I said electively. Yeah. yeah. Now you're not listening. Yeah, but it- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Tom, why do we do this to ourselves? I don't know. Why well, do we even do a video on abortion in the first place? This is what my wife was asking. Yeah. My wife actually agrees with me. But she was like, why did you even do this? Because if you're not willing to suffer the... the and I'm like, I am willing yeah. to suffer. Do you know how few people in the world can do what I just advocated for, which is like feel one way and act another? Like hardly anybody. But we do it all the time unconsciously, I think. But we, but you're right. But, but it's compartmentalization. No, but I mean to do it for the greater good. Oh. In service of something higher. It's, it, it takes it's, a it's, metacognition. Yeah. It's very hard. It to takes do. a metacognition. We also have to recognize that a lot of times our feelings are not correct. Trust yeah. your feelings is a fallacy. But not always, but it can be a fallacy. Because, yeah. and I think I think the the pro choice hardcore pro choice advocates who perform abortions and and see this as a very important medical service and I'm I'm with them on this is is that 
if you strip away the emotion, this is a rational decision and it's it, for the greater good. And I, I understand that. The thing is, you, it's very difficult to strip away the emotion around this and trying to do it by force. You know, I was told in one message, get over your bias on this. Okay, that's not how getting over bias works. You have to convince me with emotion, with compassion. You can't attack, you can't, you know, and, yeah. and listen, I'm yeah. willing to take this criticism. Get over your bias is the same as telling somebody to shut the fuck up. That's really what it is. When has that ever worked? It doesn't work. It doesn't shut, work. Hey, shut the fuck up. That has never worked and, and, in the history of time. And, and listen, I know that it doesn't work when I do it with anti-vaxxers right. on the delusional. It, yeah. does. it doesn't work. Does anybody ever hear that and goes, maybe I should be quiet? <laughs> no. You know what works on me is rational persuasion done with respectfully. Yeah. It almost always gets me to think and not shut down. I'm a human being too. So, you know, again, I think this is how we should be having this conversation. I haven't read these comments. Who knows what's going on in the shitstorm in the comments. But uh, one person was like, I don't like this guy who's talking bad about Catholicism. Catholicism sucks. <laughs> I was an can, altar boy. I have more right to talk bad about it than anybody. Can I defend Catholicism for a second? So I've spoken at uh, Catholic Health Systems, and this is what I find really beautiful about the experience. I mean, you can talk about abortion and reproductive rights, and that's all I'm in agreement with UCSF's decision, actually. When you sit there and they start with a, a invocation, or what is it called, an invocation? I'm such a religious um, ignorant. Troglodyte. I am a troglodyte. Uh, I'm a religious Luddite. And they, you bow your head, and it used to be I'd get uncomfortable as like somebody who's more of a Buddhist or whatever it is. Now, even then, I was more of a hardcore atheist. And um, you bow your head, and the person starts invoking things like, please, Lord, give us the strength to be humble in the face of illness, to be there with our patients in life and at the end of life, and these kind of things. And you're there in a room with people all connected, all the brainwaves are synchronized, everybody is feeling part of something bigger than themselves, and it is a beautiful thing. And it actually evolves out goodness in the world. Now, there are plenty of things that are bad, but that's what I love about the experience uh, at Catholic hospitals. I, I used to be more hardline against religion in general, uh, and I do think that humanity needs to evolve because religion just doesn't work anymore mm -hmm. that said if you take away religion from people they're going to have to fill that hole with something mm. and uh, some people uh like the extremist ob guys on twitter want to fill it with killing babies and <laughs> that's just how it is <laughs> sorry had, okay well, well, okay this is one, one thing I but people want to fill it with nutrition they want to fill it with pro-vax anti-vax with you know, it's just, it's all, we've lost religion. Yeah. And now we're like it's REM. Other belief. Other yeah. belief. We're all like REM. Yeah, yeah. We're all like REM now. It's me in the corner. Like that guy that looks like Moby, but is not Moby. Speaking of which, Moby. Don't say this story. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say Now this you got to say Okay, all right. Speaking of Twitter outrage. All right. Twitter outrage. So Moby... Uh, writes a book. Some uh, did we talk about this the other day on the show? Uh, we talked about it behind the scenes. Behind just, the scenes, right. you. Yeah. Oh, right, right. So, 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 Moby writes a book. You know, Moby, the autobiography, portrait of a male model who's bald, <laughs> and uh, and in it he writes about dating Natalie Portman, mm -hmm. and Natalie Portman goes on Twitter or wherever and says, "Yeah, that's not how I remember it. I remember a creepy older guy who made me really uncomfortable," and um, the Twitter sphere was like, "Oh, snap." Moby, are you like kind of rapey? Like what's going on here? And uh, so Moby, in his brilliant Mobyisms, Mobiness, his high Mobiness says, wait a minute, hold on. Looks through all his photos, old Polaroids from like 1999 when she was just 18 or 19, flips through, finds the creepiest fucking picture you could ever find of him shirtless, looking about 36, and her 18, in, in hugging her and her being like this, looking super uncomfortable. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that's the best you could do. So of course the meme factory went crazy and they're like, Moby is a fucking creep. <laughs> He's a creep. Like, how can you believe the guy? Like at this point, it's like nothing he says is valid. Now, again, are we, who do you, how, how, you know, I'm always gonna side with when, when a woman says, no, I was creeped out and it's not okay. That's her experience. I believe her, right? All I know is that young Natalie Portman is smoking hot. That's all I know, see? Okay. As a married man who cares about his marriage, unlike some, I can't say things like that. Uh, Listen, that's just facts, dog. 
<laughs> like the sun is hot, you know? Is the sun hot? Yeah. Define hot, Tom hot, Heinrich. It's hot, hot, bro. In our postmodernist construction, hot is a construct. You know what? Speaking of musicians, I was going to save this because I thought we were going to talk a little bit about uh, the, the video we put out about nurses oh, yeah. being more obese than the general population. Yes. But we may not get there. Yeah, we'll do it another day. So... What are you going to say? I brought treats. Oh, uh, hell yeah. These these are called wrap snacks. <laughs> and this one has Cardi B on it. I'm going to give this one to Z. These are uh, Cardi B's Jerk Barbecue Wavy Potato Chips. And they're for you now, Z. Uh, this one... There's nothing racist about this. This one's, for, this one's for Logan. Uh, it's Lil Boozy's Louisiana <laughs> Heat. Uh, and I'm going to toss this to Logan now. There you go. And then uh, for my for myself, you know, because I'm a I'm a spicy guy, I went little Yachty's hot cheese. Oh, fries. little yeah. Yachty! You see that right there? Are these legit from a grocery store? I got these from the gas station across the street because I support black culture. <laughs> <laughs> and they look delicious. I might have one right now. <laughs> you know, how how long have we been mm. together? How, how long? Well, Yachty, he does a good. <gasps> they look like his hair. <laughs> Look, show me, show me the chip. Show look, me the chip. That's his hair. That, uh huh. And that's the chip. Oh my look, gosh. Look at it. Mm hmm. Man, what will they think of next? <laughs> <laughs> you know, how many years have we been together as a couple, Tom? You and me. Many, many, Too many. And yet, you still surprise me every time. Mm. You know, this is a cup. This is a match made in. Oh wow! <laughs> look at that. <laughs> All right, uh, Logan. Here's a call to action, guys. Listen. Message me. Uh, be angry with me. That's fine. I'm not taking the video down. I've now said what I think I need to clarify it. If you disagree with me, I understand that, but I'm not taking it down. I don't think. And uh, I don't know, guys. This is hard. This is not easy. That's why we have these conversations. Can I say something? Can, give me Do this. Do it. Say it. Microphone. No motherfucker, all right, on the internet, who's a doctor, is doing the shit that we're doing, okay? I'm going to... Tom Tom had to tell me this the other day, talk me off the ledge, because I was going to fucking delete the video just out of fear of the fucking mob. He's like, Z, you know, sometimes I get the sense that you actually worry that you're not a good person and that you're seeing things through this filter. And I'm like, no, I'm... A, maybe. Okay, yeah, I always feel like a bad person because that's like part of the ingrained imposter syndrome, right, that I've always had. And I'm going to say right now, he said, no, you look, I hang out with you for a while. You're actually a good person. I'm like, wait, what? And then I realized, look, at, sometimes you just have to care enough about yourself and be compassionate and say, you know what, I am trying my best to do the right thing. And no one is going to fuck with us. We're going to have the conversations we want. We will listen to you if you criticize us, if you think we're wrong. We care about the shit. We really do. We will call out stupidity and clown fuckery any chance we get, and no one else's healthcare in healthcare is doing that except for us, and we're gonna keep doing that for you motherfuckers, okay? Because it matters, and that's, that's what I wanted to say. Z is a good person, goddammit, okay? Now, Z, does this man look like he's from the inner city to you? <laughs> or not? He, he, he looks like he got a second trimester abortion at an inner city urban hospital. I use all the dog whistles there. What do you think? Uh, I'm glad we had this conversation. Actually. I am too. And listen up, intersectional left. I'm not your fucking friend. I don't give a shit what you think about me in the comments. Call me a misogynist. Call me whatever the fuck you want. I don't fucking care. Some of y'all killing babies. Shut the fuck up. End of story. I don't believe those things. Uh, but but Tom, I do believe this. Tom does not give a fuck. Uh, so great. come at him. All right, guys. But I you love you. What? These cheese fries are bomb. They look delicious. You should have one. Thumbnail. Right. We need a thumbnail. Mm. This is a thumbnail. These are good. They're delicious. I haven't had them, but I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> because I also support black culture.